Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode 41 of Scion of the Dark House, a fifth edition gothic horror Dungeons and Dragons podcast. Seeing as this is gothic horror, some things might come up to a line for some people, such as talk about abuse and trauma, uh, violence, gore, body horror, child endangerment, and a plethora of other things. If anything comes up to a line for you, please take a break. Your support is important to us, but so is your mental health. So last session, we began with you all, I believe, on the River Styx, on uh, the ferryman's boat, where you encountered a variety of strange encounters, such as a ghostly elvish procession. Uh, monstrous fish people that attacked you and used strange magic. Um, you managed to kill them and get some interesting charms off of them, as well as a uh, water fairy of sorts called a Nerid named Styx, who granted you all a faster uh, passage to your destination, as well as giving Percy a charm of sticks resistance via a kiss you then made it to the cathedral of tears whereupon you entered the gardens through the city seeing a carnival that seemed to be set up by very obviously fiendish forces called the carnival demoniorum of which you passed by untempted by or at least untempted at the moment you found your way into the garden where you found not only the soul of the piece of the soul of Lark, but also a piece of the soul of Brennan and a piece of the soul of Charlotte. You freed all three of them and then were attacked by a mysterious figure who revealed herself to be Samantha, the girl that worked at the tavern at the very beginning of the campaign of which Lark gave a seed to. She informs the party that she has been in the Feywild for a very long period of time and that she was eventually traded across party lines to an archfey known as the Bear King who wanted to stop Lark from getting a tiny piece of his soul back. She fought valiantly but was unable to resist Lark's constant counterspelling and was fireballed to death. Whereupon she revealed that she is no longer human, she is now Fae, and returned to the Fae Wild as Fae normally do. Her displacer beast, however, did not fare as well. You guys killed it and skinned it. And we begin there where you have finished skinning the displacer beast. You have a full pelt, albeit in multiple pieces, as well as two tentacles, of which you have just finished stuffing into the bag. So, after that interesting little ordeal, what are you guys doing? Okay, who's up for a carnival? I mean, just real quick, is anybody going to make any comments about the tentacles and Percy's new fish boyfriend, or are we just, like, glossing right past that? Um, I think I already expressed my disgust last episode. <laughs> um, disgust? Disgust? <laughs> Over uh, what? Over the tentacles. The kiss was oh, quite okay. nice. Um, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I think I, I, I'm going to turn to Lark and say, we're having a conversation when we are not in the, in the shadow foul, um, but we should probably make leaving our priority. Lark's, so we... Lark's playing with his soul ball. <laughs> like, uh, that's probably for the best. So we don't want to find out what's going on in that little carnival situation over there. No, I do. Curious. I want. I mean, see, I did say that we can look at it on the way back out. It was like we can money. we can peek in, and then leave. <laughs> okay, but like, what if they have popcorn? What if can popcorn I... steals your soul. Ah, uh, yes, and my a piece of mine is physically <laughs> out here. <I'll... laughs> Yeah. What, what should I do? I, I can't, it's not going to fuse with me until we leave the shadow bell. It so might be mean, taken. It might be taken from you. Yeah. You can like put it in a pocket or something. I mean, 
We can't put it in my bag. Can we put it in your bag? No, I don't think so. I think we tried, and then last time. No, you you didn't try. You guys just didn't put it in the bag. Oh, okay. You want to try? <laughs> no. Let's try along with the along with the dead skin and the tentacles in there. Uh, can I try to put this like soul sphere? I don't know into this bag. It goes into the bag without a problem. Okay. I don't know how <laughs> souls work. I didn't think I had one for a while. <laughs> okay. Um, now that our valuables are protected, um, let's, we can take a look. We can be cautious and, and we can take a look. <laughs> Kettle corn. Yeah. <laughs> You really shouldn't eat any corn they give you at a hell carnival. Yeah, we're not supposed to eat anything <laughs> from here. If you're hungry, have someone's brought chocolates. We had chocolates. Yeah, yes. Everybody has chocolates. I think you all oh, bought like yeah. a five pound bag of chocolate. <laughs> Except Lark bought, Lark went extra and bought candied flowers. So he's just like munching on one. Yeah. Didn't anybody bring alcohol? I thought we brought some for um, I think, Arthur. Uh, yeah, I yes. think Arthur. Arthur brought alcohol. Jaegered Arthur bought some like bottles of whiskey. Good <laughs> My mom packed us some. <laughs> I think yeah, I think she did pack you guys Yay, whiskey mom. as well. <laughs> so there's plenty of um, alcohol. Amazing. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so yeah. whiskey and chocolate for dinner, breakfast? What All time of them. is it? Um, Who knows? Um, <laughs> carnival shadow time. Shadowfell stuff. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> oh, did, did, did oh yeah, whatever. <laughs> okay, good to know. Oh, above game, real fast before we trek back. Um, does anybody know what my and Jazz's current HP is? I, I don't think you guys took a hit during no. our two. Did they take Jazz? Mm. I no, think Jasmine got got, a... got slapped by the Displacer Beast, but that's about it, and I don't think she took very much damage. Yeah. I, okay. I didn't know how to edit the sheet for her. Yeah, I was literally just scribbling on top of it with base, what basically amounts to a digital crayon. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Never works. Like I said, I'm going to have to I'm gonna have to renegotiate some things. Um, okay, I'm cool then. So you all walk back through these silent gardens with these strange morning statues and sarcophagi just in the middle of these little courtyards. Down. Can I, can I take like, can I like harvest a, a cutting of a plant from here just for funsies? Uh, sure. Yeah, you can have a, a little sprig of this plant although i think you did find last session that casting druid crafted nothing to them so they are kind of not plants in a really weird way okay but yeah you can take a little sprig of it yeah um i'm not liking the idea of you with any more strange otherworldly plant matter he's probably just, just trying to get rose a sibling yeah rosie Rosie needs Rosie needs friends, darling. Rosie we need to need friends from here. Um, who, above game, who is Rosie now? Do I know this? Oh, oh, you weren't here for Rosie. Oh, you yeah, weren't you here, weren't for, here Rosie. for Rosie. <laughs> She's oh. an awakened. Well, they, I should say, are an awakened rose bush that you guys picked up. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's Lark's new child. Yeah, Lark treats that rose bush like better than anyone. than anyone else in the any other NPC we've met in the campaign. Or us. Okay, where is this sentient in my house? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Being taken care of the grandparents. <laughs> I and am like, absolutely in love right now. <laughs> it's it's fully innocent and stuff, and Lark's just like, if anyone touches you without your permission, stab them. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that sounds about right. That's yep. about right. Okay. Okay, good to know. So friends for Rosie, got it. Okay, so um, moving on. <laughs> so you make your way back to the thoroughfare and back down to the red tents of the carnival where you see the tiger demon that you know is the Rakshasa shouting and calling out to all of these souls that are passing by to have one or two of them float in their general direction and through the gates of this carnival. 
as well as a succubus who is juggling flaming balls and an incubus who is doing tricks with a flaming hoop. Of course, still inside. Are? Do we know, like, you could from probably, the research? Well, you could probably guess pretty easily. They're not the most uncommon. Uh, the only one was the Rakshasa, and I believe you rolled high enough last time to get some information on them, just that they were generally a uh, fighter. Oh, did we lose Yofi again? You look so surprised. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Uh, we may have lost Yofi. Um, yep, we did. Okay. <laughs> Technical difficulties, everyone. Um, oh, there we go. You're My back. technology is not being kind to me today. Technical so. difficulties, everyone. It happens. Yeah. Um, so you are back at the carnival. Um, yeah, you are back at the carnival. Wonderful. Um, I guess perception check for like what's interesting. <laughs> um, yeah, you can give me a perception check. I'm also gonna pers- try that, I guess. Oh shit, I think Yoki froze again. Yeah. Oh. Uh, 14. 10. Yep, we got technical difficulties. All right, it happens. <laughs> Zoom isn't perfect. Uh, so Lark got a 14. Uh, no, Percy got the 14. <laughs> Percy got the 14. Lark got- 10. 10, okay. Um, so as you are looking into uh, this vast, surprisingly vast carnival of many, many tents. Um, You see there are definitely signs posted to various things um, like concessions, fortune tellers, the big top, um, other things like that. Uh, That's all written in common? Surprisingly, yes, but it's also written in a variety of other languages as well. Um, not any super exotic languages, like you don't actually see uh, like Infernal or Abyssal, you don't see Draconic, you don't see Celestial, you just see languages like Elvish or Dwarvish or Halfling or other things like that. Um, Most likely to cater to the souls that they're trying to get in for whatever reason. Um, So... Does it seem like there's like a show about to start in the big top or what? Uh, It seems like there's constantly shows going on. This is a nonstop carnival. There are games, there are shows, there are all kinds of things to entice souls to come in. What happens afterwards, you don't know. What are we thinking, boys? Wait, can I do a perception check? I'm sorry. Yes, you Because I feel like I want to feel really bad being in this tent place, and I'm kind of have the urge to burn it. Okay, that was bad. That's six. Twelve total. Yeah, you kind of uh, get the same. Just tents upon tents of various different carnival things, and that it is definitely an incredibly busy carnival. Reperception checking right now, is that what we're doing? (laughs) Uh, Yes, if you'd like to. Okay. I mean, I'm not even gonna bother with primeval awareness because I'm pretty sure I'd have a stroke, so. (laughs) Yeah. It's all over the place. Yeah, this whole plane is full of undead creatures. Yep. Right, right. So, like, I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> mm-hmm. Nope, actually, I lied. I want to see if Jasmine can smell kettle corn. <laughs> All we right. cannot eat anything. 
from here. Why do you have to shit on my parade? Okay, like <laughs> because you want right. to stay here forever. Whatever. Do you want to stay here forever? Uh, she can get a category perception check. Forever, but... That's the one rule. <laughs> you got one job. <laughs> we can we can like examine it before I ingest it. Maybe potentially. I mean, I don't know. How about we bring it out of here and then you eat it out here, out, out of there, back to where we're supposed to be? I feel like that sort of defeats the purpose, but like. Exactly. The purpose is for you to stay here if you eat it. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, that like... is a. Where is she? Perception. Okay, so that's a 24. Oh my God. Um. Yeah, there's there's kettle corn. <laughs> yes, I'm so excited right now. Okay, well, I mean that's my mission. So like, if there's anything else anybody wants to do, I'm burning this. I'll place follow. Just, I'll follow him to the place. kettle corn. To I'm burning this. Place. Hopefully, protect his immortal soul. I'm burning this place <laughs> with the kettle corn, so they. You can know, this is it. a very efficient way for them to trap souls here. I'm burning this place so they can't eat any kernel. This seems like a very okay. quick way to make a one, lot of enemies. Yeah, one more building burns down around me, and I swear... It's not a building, this is a tent. Don't mention fire around him. Remember what happens if you get too depressed or freaked out in the shadow fell. The have only some, reason why I'm so adamant <laughs> about this is because that means Wait. Jasmine is going to have to stay here, too, if he stays here. My jazz. Yeah. What happened? Where's the kettle jazz? corn? No. Where's, where's the kettle corn? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. So as you enter this place, you do see um, the tiger demon, the Rakshasa, kind of bow and say enjoy, and then turn back to the other souls. As you continue walking around, there are definitely undead creatures like ghosts and zombies and skeletons that are kind of wandering aimlessly around while there's all of this commotion happening. And you do find a concession stand. It is a large sort of carnival wagon, richly decorated with red and gold. Um, and I blast it immediately. I'll blast it. God. I'll blast You're blasting it. it. Firebolt. <laughs> Oh my it, God. <laughs> All right, get ready to run. Firebolt at it. <laughs> the flame shoots forward and just poof, nothing happens. <laughs> I'll just freeze it. Try. It's I'll gonna freeze freeze it. all of your spell Sorry. slots on this. On this <laughs> oh, they're all cantrips. God. I can do it many times as I want. <laughs> they're cantrips. So are you you're frost biting it now? <laughs> yes. Um, I believe you have to touch it to frostbite Why? it, I think. I think I'll oh, run to yeah. it. Oh, yeah, go ahead. Touch it, touch it Rarick. <laughs> I'll run to it and touch it. Rarick, stop making a scene. Yeah, God. You As know you what? run up and just slap the side of this thing and ice begins to form, it then melts and drips down the side of this cart that is kind of remarkably warm. And at this point, it kind of mm -hmm. rocks and shifts as this huge, strange, almost oh, like no. bear pig creature with tiny little wings poking out, kind of leans out and goes, Oi, can I help you? No. <laughs> then get the um, fuck away from my cot. And then leans back in and continues serving. I lost you guys again. Mm -hmm. Uh-oh. <laughs> We can still hear you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, there you are. Oh, oh, there you're back. <laughs> yeah, you guys are in and out for me. We'll see what happens. There we go. That's that's good. Okay. I'm really uh -oh. sorry about this. I don't know what's going on. Yeah. So, um, man bear pig? Apparently, yes. Okay. Okay. What's your bear name? Pig. Bear so, pig. You can call me Pudgy. 
I serve the food around here. Pudge. You want something to eat? <laughs> you gotta pay me. Oh, that voice is gonna wreck my throat. <laughs> I'm sorry, I asked. <laughs> okay. Okay. That's cute. So I'm assuming you guys um, have all Pudgy kind of grouped up right now. And he's my new favorite thing. Yeah. Percy definitely was like, oh, Pudgy. <laughs> you should hear Rosie. <laughs> Uh, so Arthur, you wanted to eat He's kettle so corn. <laughs> are we really? Yes. Are we really? All the kettle him corn. Do yes. This? Yes. We have we I mean, learned that with, if Arthur sets his mind on something trivial, it was near impossible to convince him otherwise. So, kettle corn, please. All right. Any kettle corn around? Trivial. Yes. Yes. I. I stand by that statement. Um, he turns around in this huge cart and it's like shaking at this point. <laughs> it's very clear that he's a wee bit too large for this cart. Um, the various uh, things that he has hanging up are swaying back and forth. You hear the clanging of pots and pans as he's like shoving them aside. And he turns back with this huge cone, this huge paper cone of kettle corn and he just hands it over. All right, there you are. What's it Anything cost, else? darling? Oh, it doesn't cost a thing. And I'm apologies, but back home we've certain rules. Is this going to trap whoever eats it in your carnival <laughs> forever? Nope. Does it have any un unknown side effects? Sometimes people get high blood pressure if they eat too much. <laughs> what kind of <laughs> already eating it <laughs> so like, like should i stop or nah uh, no pudgy darling i'm into face <laughs> fucking no okay could you, could you answer a few questions for us perhaps uh fine we are obviously not the usual i think for your carnival Maybe, maybe not. Now, darling, what what's the grift? I'm just I so curious. It. Souls. Like every fiend. I mean, souls. That was pretty obvious. <laughs> I mean, souls are, for some, quite a delicacy or a currency. Yeah. Or an accoutrement. Depends on how you want to use it. Yeah. Now I do. I, I admit I love the hustle that you all have going on here. Who's in charge? Ah, that'd be the ringmaster. You probably saw him out front. Are you okay, Spencer? <laughs> I'm powering through this. <laughs> it's the voice I picked. I'm. I love Pudgy so it. much. <laughs> you probably saw him out front. He's got a tiger face, hands on backwards. You can call him Maharaja. He's the ringmaster of the carnival. Fantastic. And just just so I... Would, you wouldn't happen to... How exactly do you trap the souls so I know to avoid it? Ah. Well, it's pretty easy to avoid. Just don't sign any contracts. We put on performances... We then ask them, hey, what was your life like? Was it good? Was it bad? Are you scared of what's happening next? Well, we have a solution for you. You just sign this contract and you work for us for a couple of years. Then you can go back to the nine hails or you can stay here and be a performer. You see all those little devils flying around and he points to all the imps and these strange little horns. They're almost like imps, but they have really rough skin. They're very pudgy. They don't have any tails. They have these huge smiles on their faces and they're climbing the tents like in like uh, monkeys. Yeah, those are all the souls. That's what happens when you sign the contract. You turn into one of them, you work off your time and then you turn into something else. And you either perform or you get sent back to hell. Now that's a system that sounds familiar. Um, can I insight check him to make sure he's not lying, though? 
Yes, you may. It's going to be hard because he's a demon. I figured. I was a nat 20 with a plus three modifier. <laughs> with a plus three modifier? Boom. Yeah, I'm proficient in it, so I don't add, I don't have wisdom, but because mm-hmm. Lark's like a social character, I took insight as one of his skills. Right. Yeah, he's probably telling the truth. Okay. This seems like a system that a demon or a devil would set up to kind of turn over souls and get ones under contract. Oh, you. thank you so much for the help, Pudgy, and for satiating my friend's hunger. Ah, of course. And he just turns and satiating. kind of looks at you, Rarick, and goes, and don't touch my fucking car. Oh, you're mm-hmm. muted. I was trying to destroy it, bitch. <laughs> Pudgy told you. Oh, Pudgy, I'm so sorry for him. I swear, it's like I can't take him anywhere sometimes. Eh. Well, if he's going to try those tricks, they're not going to work. This whole place is fireproof. Smart. Wonderful. Um... <laughs> Wonderful. All right, we have our ke- we have our kettle corn. Uh, we learned about some demons. How are we feeling? I still want to burn this place. You know, Pudgy, nobody darling, wants to if, see the show. If you're ever in the mood for a little bit of travel, Ark's gonna pull out a seed. <laughs> What's new? Do you know what this really? is, darling? Really? I'm just saying. And oh, are you bound here by contract too? Not by the same one. Mm. I was just saying, if you ever find yourself getting off of work and want to experience something new, my calling card, as it were. If you'd I can like, find it. my way by myself. Oh, fantastic, darling! Oh, oh my God. Okay. Well, if you don't mind, I have peanuts and cotton candy to sell to other undead souls. So I got to get a minute. to work. Did you say cotton candy? Yes. <laughs> Maybe just one. Okay, two. That's he just it. reaches over, <laughs> pulls out two bags. They are like paper bags with the cotton candy shoved in and just throws them in your general direction (laughs) so you now have two bags of cotton candy and a paper cone of kettle corn wonderful oh that's gone homie Um, (laughs) all right uh so you want to see the show is this what we're doing now you only go to the shadow fell once i mean like Wow. Well, okay, so this is a vacation now. <laughs> this, huh? I'm Amazing. curious about what a bunch of demons would put in a carnival, so... Aren't they all devils, though, technically? Is there a you difference? can make me a nature check. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> nature check. Devils, demons, and yuglots. That's only six. That is not my insight. Mm. Can I do that? <laughs> oh. Uh, sure. Fifteen total. Um. So Pudgy seems to be a creature known as a Nalfishni. It is a demon not a devil. Ha. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, so big top, big top time. What? Big cool. what? And it's been big a while top. since I've seen a big top. Yeah. I, and Lark, uh, uh, Lark, you I are was grounded late. from yeah. giving people seeds right right now. Also, um, <laughs> so <laughs> even to pig demons. Oh, oh, Percy, that's adorable. Have I ever told you how he can literally think you can order me around? Well, 
I am most often right next to you and I will do my best to tell everyone you ever try to give a seat to, to not take it. Well, it's their choice, not yours. Wow. Yes. We are, we are once again it for me. talking about this later, um, but let's go see a weird carnival. <laughs> I mean, really, though, you have to admit it's not a bad business setup. Lark's just saying as he looks at all the little, like, fat piglet de- devil things, the horrible little imps that these souls are turning into. Right. Well, they seem like they're having a good time, at least. <laughs> So you make your way to a very large tent in the center of this place, or relatively in the center. And there is, once again, somehow, this undead organ grinder with the undead monkey turning the crank of the organ grinder with a big smile on his face as he kind of just kind of does a little jig on the spot as souls are just wandering in, just completely vacant eyed. It's a very strange thing to watch these vacant eyed, emotionless undead creatures drifting around as these people are like putting on a show and dance, giving it their all. It's very bizarre. And he kind of tips his hat occasionally at some visitors as he continues playing his little organ and the monkey continues dancing around. Uh, And you make your way inside to see that there is a huge, um, almost arena in the center where there are tons of seats around the outside, but they're probably not even a quarter of the way full of skeletons and zombies and ghosts just sitting there staring blankly into the middle of this place. It is a gigantic three ring circus. And at the moment, there is an act where there are um, somehow, once again, the twins that you saw, the succubus incubus twins at the front are doing trapeze tricks through the air as a woman with huge black wings and a fiery whip is cracking the whip left and right as you see owl bears undead owlbears, of course, um, balancing on large balls rolling around in a circle with music playing, this unearthly waltz seeming to play as you all come in and begin to find your seats. Yeah, as, as we pass the organ render guy, Percy's like, <laughs> He's like uncomfortably <laughs> nods and walks past. And <laughs> All right, I still we, we, just we don't sit. want to be there. I'm like cartoonishly <laughs> like this. Very much just mirroring the other. Lighten up, gents. <laughs> the other. Percy once again Mark's casts protection taking... from good and evil on himself. <laughs> Mark's just taking notes. He's like. <laughs> Organ grinder, question mark, (laughs) hot twins. I love how we all have our little notebooks, but I'm not taking note of this one. What the hell? (laughs) And I was like, you know what? That's a good idea. And then I just also do protect, (laughs) protection from good and evil by myself. Because if anything, Arter's already gone since he already ate yeah. food. So he's gone. Can't protect him mm. no more. At this point, you... We hear... have established that it was just kettle corn. From hell. We did. <laughs> I'm still worried. Okay, kettle corn, whatever. <laughs> After that time, now here. that I've taken left? four points of psychic damage... Um, (laughs) you notice the act begin to come to a bit of a close as the twins come together, meeting in the center, grabbing hands and transforming into flames that then spiral down, causing the owlbears as the flames pass by to transform into columns of flames for a moment before vanishing. And the woman in the center cracks her whip one more time and explodes 
leaving the ring of the circus empty. Stars begin to descend as the red transforms into kind of a purple and blue of twilight. Stars twinkle above in the big top as a single spotlight comes down to the center of this ringed theater. And you hear, once again, the voice of Maharaja come out of thin air, echoing across the tent. And now we hear the beautiful voice of our resident songstress, Priscilla. And stepping out of the shadows is a woman wearing a very beautiful dress. But she has snakes for hair. And as she steps out, the snakes kind of curl up into this sort of beautiful um, sort of coiled hair design. She takes a deep breath and she begins to sing. And it is magnificent. It is better than even the most talented members of the opera back at the Candlelight Theater that you may, Percy, remember from your childhood as your parents dragged you to various operas, probably. Her voice is even better than the best of those opera singers. And she sings her beautiful song, takes a bow, and then backs out of the spotlight that then goes out. The stars go out, and the big top is dark once again. And you hear, and now more excitement, more drama from our flame breather. Blaze, and the lights come up and flames begin to just <laughs> from around the ring as this sort of uh, androgynous but very tall humanoid person who is wrapped almost entirely in chains begins to do tricks with the chains as they begin to weave around and trail flames. And this creature even begins to pull out a torch and breathe gouts of flames into the air that then transform into cackling imps that fly above the crowd before flying out of the tent. And that is the current act that is going on for a little while. Clap. Percy might say- Okay, I'm gonna be honest. I could have dealt without the fire. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, you know, it seems like they're putting an awful lot of effort into something that seems like most of the crowd really couldn't care less about. <laughs> I mean, on perhaps that's the way you see it, darling, but look at what they're, look at their target audience. Large just an emotion to, the rest of the crowd's pretty much just zombies and ghosts, right? Yeah, zombies, ghosts, skeletons. They're just sitting there blank, staring. Like, I liked it. They need... They need a little bit of enticement, right? To sign themselves. Imagine they could, imagine if they imagined themselves on that stage like that. Are they enticed? I can't. I can't tell. <laughs> can I? Can I lean over to like the nearest undead and be like, "Are you enticed?" <laughs> the nearest undead Are you is probably a good like 15 feet away since this is not a packed tent at all like I said it was less than a quarter of the seats are filled <laughs> yeah and Arthur wouldn't be sitting anywhere near that business right <laughs> but I mean Percy think about it they the glamour, the glitz, the beauty, it's not a hard sell, especially given the state that most of their potential employees, you might say, are in when they come here. Yes, I just, well, it's not for me. Um, thank you. <laughs> as well stunning as the show was. 
I mean, especially considering who knows where these poor saps could wind up when they're done in the Shadowfell or if they could even escape the Shadowfell in the first place otherwise. Right. Mm -hmm. Percy has no idea what what happens after the Shadowfell. <laughs> well, from your religious teachings, it would have been that they have mm -hmm. to pass through the cathedral and into the embrace of the Raven Queen, and then their souls go wherever they need to go, be it okay. an upper plane or be it a lower plane. Right. So, well, hopefully the Raven Queen is... Uh, merciful to all these poor souls. <laughs> oh, really, if you think about yeah. it. What sort of soul would sign themselves over to the Nine Hells anyway, if they weren't just trying to get a lower sentence as it was? I wonder how many of them are murderers. <laughs> aren't aren't hmm, most of us point. murderers at this point? <laughs> That's fair, but when I die, I'm not going to wind up down here. Or I should say, if I die. Won't, will you become like a flower again? If I'm fortunate, I'll do what we saw Samantha do and just reform back home. Ah. Um, well, good for you. <laughs> um, well, I think this show has been lovely, and I think Arthur has finished all of his cotton candy. So why don't we head home? Still got a little bit if you want some. I'm really just nope. fine. <laughs> <laughs> okay, suit yourself. So as num, you, num, num, num. so are you watching the show for a little bit longer or are you heading out? Um, lost everybody again, can't hear nothing. Oh no. Uh -oh. Oh, no. Ah, uh, testicle difficulties. There we go. Oh yeah, we're leaving. Sort of. Yeah, I think I think yep. Rarick is quite set on leaving. <laughs> um, so uh, I'm not sure what else they have to show us, but I we brought huh? we brought a 15 year old to a carnival that, for the record, he wanted to go to, <laughs> and he just spent the entire time pouting. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, he wanted to come here to commit arson. <laughs> um, he only started oh. pouting when he found out arson wouldn't work. That's, that's, uh, yeah. Right. Right. He always wants to commit arson. Yeah. It's not arson when it's purposely done. No, it, no, it still is. I think that's what makes it it's, arson. That's really. literally the definition of arson. That's what makes it arson. <laughs> um, so yeah, I guess we'll, we'll Otherwise, start heading out. Otherwise, it's just a buff. <laughs> as you are okay. leaving, well, there is a purple tent outside. Dun, dun, it seems dun. it just appeared out of nowhere purple with yellow stars and moons on it and parting the curtain and peeking out is a very old looking woman with frazzled hair purple skin and two little horns poking out and she goes oh how very interesting and she comes out and starts going immediately towards you all Mm -hmm. Ooh, th hi thank you oh we're, we're really good we're good uh we, we're just leaving actually <laughs> oh are you sure you sure you don't want your fortune told by madam lulu no <laughs> <laughs> um. no they already have a person who can see the future thank you <laughs> hmm. apologies madam lulu it appears that rarick here i'm here He's apparently pro experiencing professional jealousy or... <laughs> mm, yes, I've I mean, heard of this. Whatever divination uh, it is you do won't be true. Hmm. <laughs> Are you sure about uh -huh. that? 
So and at this point, you feel another presence kind of appear next to you. It's this very tall, <laughs> absolutely bone thin creature. It seems to have calcified dragonfly wings folded up against this cloak that it's wearing. It has long fingers that dangling off of it is a single puppet that it manipulates with its bony fingers. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, and, oh uh, hello. Uh, th- thank you. No, no, thank you. <laughs> the offer is always open. Oh, and who are you, darling? This is, <laughs> this is quite a game. <clears throat> I am Odeon. The puppet master. I help Madame Lulu with um, visual aids. And he kind of wiggles the puppet. Mm. Dear. We have a variety. You want to give this one a kiss, Percy? Um, I'm fine. Thank you for the offer for him. <laughs> like, mm. Um. Oh, but don't you want to know one of the biggest mysteries you have to face? Yes. And he holds up the puppet uh, I mean, I'm and cool. shakes the puppet. The puppet blurs for a moment as you hear the clacking of wood and you see the puppet has transformed into a puppet of Belladonna as he continues manipulating it with his fingers. Oh, looks like, what do yeah. you know about my sister? What? Oh, we know many things. We can tell you, no, I thought you wanted for to a leave. price. What? What is the price? Hmm. What can we? What are you willing to offer? A tentacle. I can give you some gold. Please pull out a tentacle from the bag. The tentacle. Hmm. Hey, ain't nobody give giving away my tentacle. Just one. We have three. Is this it, is uh, Ma- Madam Lulu like? Is she giving off like demon devil vibes or is this like a hag? This is definitely a night hag. We also have the figurine of wondrous power and whistle of wave riding. How about some will gold suffice? Mm, no. Hunter shark. We don't really of use that down here. Oh, now, what are we now, looking for? Like years off of my life or a, a magical trinket? <laughs> Wait a minute. Like, Her eyes widened. If Percy, you're offering. Have you, have you still got an angel feather left? Uh, yes, I think I have the one and I pull out my, my fallen angel feather. We all now, have them. Now, Madam Lulu, darling. This is a 100% bona fide feather from a fallen angel. Yes, I can tell from here. Quite a powerful artifact or reagent or ingredient or snack, depending on your mood. Yes. All right. <laughs> it's supposed to suffice. And she reaches down and just snatches it. Um, I love okay. how Mark <laughs> just started sounding like he's from Louisiana. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bona fide feather. <laughs> Well, we have a very interesting uh, story to tell you. And at this point, Odeon pulls his hand under his cloak and the cloak pulls aside to reveal that inside it's a puppet stage, strangely. And there is the puppet, this guy's Belladonna, cool. standing the on the stage. That's the strangest thing that's ever flashed me before. Mark says that completely in character as it happens. <laughs> There's yep. the puppet of Belladonna that is standing on the stage, surrounded by a realistic night sky. As she's standing there, three skeletal figures appear standing around her. And they give her a crown, a cloak, and a staff. And then they move to the side of the stage as she turns and waves the staff in the air. And appearing 
just kind of dropping out of the sky is a orb, a red orb covered in eyes and mouths. And then the whole stage is covered in darkness as the cloak pulls closed and his hand returns out with a completely blank puppet. Ah, your sister is very important to the cosmic order, it seems. Oh, um, so she is. And yes. And <laughs> my laugh is genuine. <laughs> Uh, like Rarek actually do, laughs. Do you, do you offer interpretations of, of what that, what is the red orb? You already know what the red orb is. You've seen it many times. Is it, is it ha- Hadar, Hadar, the, Adar. the the red star? Is that what that is? Or is it? Not quite. Is it th- th- there is Dune? Yes. Yes. Uh Uh-oh. Apologies, Madam Lulu. Percy's not fast on the uptake sometimes. It didn't look like a moon. (laughs) He's clearly (laughs) found out. And I'm still (laughs) laughing. Rarick is still laughing. I'm I'm just curious, darling. Are are your... the, The Nine Hells, are they aware of what's going on on the material plane currently? In ways, yes. And do you all have contingency theories yet? Or contingency plans, apologies. Not exactly. Not at the moment. Ah, so I suppose we'll have to do all the heavy lifting on our side. Fantastic. And and what else? Percy already received a vision, I believe, when I when I cast the divination, divination spell of mm-hmm. those three artifacts. Yes. Um, of course, in the puppet version they look very different. Um, gotcha. The staff, of course, is like a dowel rod with, you know, like a little ball on the end. The crown is literally like the stereotypical circle with various points on it. And the cloak is just a piece of cloth that they've wrapped around the puppet. But you kind of recognize that combination of staff, crown, yeah. and cloak. It's the deadly hollow. No. <laughs> um, well, uh... That's new. Um, thank you. Uh, um, and enjoy the feather. Yes, I most certainly will. There's just gonna like jab Percy with his elbow. See, <laughs> aren't you glad you came? I don't know. <laughs> um, uh yeah i'll start walking out of the carnival <laughs> Good i really didn't learn anything you anything new from that well so as, as soon as we exit and uh, i'm assuming we'll start, start walking towards oh um will we start walking towards the the water i'm assuming we're about to call the boatman again mm-hmm. um, in a minute um percy might be like i um oh you're back I, uh, a little while ago, I, I prayed for guidance, and I think I dreamed about those three artifacts, um, the, the cloak, the staff, and the crown. I, I guess they're part of the ritual to, to summon Therizdun, and, and those those lich those skeletons must be the liches the the chain the chains of Thera's Dune, and I think the last part wasn't there the, the Watcher I think they were called. So it was, it was from what Madame Lulu was showing us. It looks like Bella might be the Watcher. When did you say you saw this vision? Few days ago, I think. Uh, yeah. you, you told us about like about did games. He Have tell you told us anybody that? about it yet? I don't think I did. Okay. I don't think he did. So, you had a vision that you didn't tell us, and now we found Big out shock. 
this I'm not in shock. No, not personally at all. I'm a big proponent of only letting people know things that they need to know when they need to know them. Me too, but oh. this is divination. Yeah, I'm aware. When we woke up, things 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 seemed tense, and we were all having a weird discussion that I now know Lark is like evil. But, but I don't know. I don't know about admitting are, shit is evil or not. But I I guess Bella is a lot more involved in this than I thought. I'll be the one to throw it out there then. Should we just kill her? No! No, we are not killing my sister! I mean... Oh. It's doable, but... Uh. Mercy, darling, your sister appears to be at the center of a doomsday prophecy, and the easiest way that I can see to nip it in the bud is to pinch it off before it grows We're, we're all in the center of a doomsday prophecy. She's... That was a good person, and she's my sister, and well, I'm not killing I'm, her. If it would solve the problem, I... I wouldn't really have an issue with it. But that being said, we have no way of knowing that her soul wouldn't just somehow make it back from the shadow fell and like, you know, do the thing anyway. Oh, and maybe so if, even if we sure killed her, our best the option. role might just pass to someone else. We have to stop the ritual, not my sister. I mean, it at least explains her sudden manifestation of so many supernatural powers all at once. Mm-hmm. True. Um, I mean, if there were a way to destroy her soul, though. No, no, no. no I'm just spitballing here. <laughs> um, and we just put her soul in a bag? You can destroy no, souls. You can transform souls. You can consume souls. Well, we're not doing any of those things. Um, oh, fool. but can we have, do, speaking, do you have some kind of like maybe crazy fairy jar we can like stick it in? Or why don't we just leave the shadow fell first of all, and and worry about the uh, the first soul that we we are trying to take care of? That is fair. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So we'll talk about murdering Percy's sister later then. No, we won't. We really Maybe won't. Maybe we should ask her first. Uh-huh. Is it okay? Be- oh yes, we- let's ask her for permission to kill her. As a sacrifice hey. for the greater good. I, I'll talk to Bella about this and see if maybe maybe, if maybe her cats have showed her something. I don't know, but we're not killing her. Oh, that's right. She got a bunch of cranes. I mean, it's an option. Just putting it out there. It's not. Uh, Lark's just going to whisper to Arthur. Later. Let's, later. Let's <laughs> Um, so do we make it to the, the water? Yes. <laughs> wait, wait, hang on. Did you, you make it to the water? And as you begin to walk down the dock, you see the fog rise and out from the fog, rowing his boat comes the boatman, Zinesh, who comes up and parks his boat beside the, one of the statues that are kind of sticking out into the water and allows you to get on before rowing and beginning to turn the boat around and beginning to sail off down the river Styx back into the fog. Who's got the wave of the whistle of wave riding? Um, I don't know. <laughs> I don't think we divvied it up. Yeah, I think um, we just threw. We've just been throwing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you just threw shit in the bag. Okay, let's use this then. Let's see. We can go faster because uh, I don't want to be here no more. It wouldn't work on the boat. You would know this. You would actually have to be in the water. And given that multiple people have told you not to touch the water. Okay, fine. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, maybe let's we can not just, do that. We can just let the ferryman do his job. <laughs> Surprisingly, the journey doesn't have any surprises. You see a few odd 
phantasmagorical scenes of spirits acting out something in various ruins as you pass by, but there are no sudden fish people attacks. There are no friendly water fae popping out of the water. You just sail on in silence. And it seems that the journey is a bit shorter as the fog rolls back in. And at that point, you see the bag that you put the soul in begin to glow. The golden light begins to shine out of the uh, opening, excuse me, of the bag. Can you, can you <laughs> open that, Eric, please? What? Open your bag, darling, it's glowing. Oh, shit. <laughs> So I open it. There is a trail of gold that comes out and swirls around before flowing into Lark. And then it all vanishes. You feel somehow, even though you didn't feel like you were missing any part of you before, you feel somehow more whole now that you have regained this. Mm. And it's also clear that you are now on the material plane and the boat comes to somewhat of a slightly unexpected rough stop on gravel. And you are about 200 feet away from where you left. And the boatman just motions to the shore and says, you may depart. Right, so, um, th thank you. Uh... <laughs> And as you get out Cheers. onto the rocky shores, the boat floats backwards into the fog before the fog rolls back away, revealing the river that just what feels like only a couple of hours ago you left from. Um, well, that seemed like it was a lot shorter of a trip than I thought it was going to be. Uh, why don't we... Go check in with everyone. Uh, uh, above game, we are where now? Material plane. Lark's just like wiping a stray tear okay. that came out of his eye. <laughs> He's like, oh, hmm. it's different, you know? <laughs> are you okay? I'm fine, darling. I'm always okay. I just, oh, that piece of me was crying for months, or however long I've been caught on the mortal plane. It appears to be having or a little bit of an impact. Hmm. Well, I hope that works itself out. This is a weird look for you. <laughs> no. Hmm. Hmm. But you feel good that we did it? That's all done? I'm, I, you, you saw the spiraling golden light, just as I did, so we can presume that I'm whole again. And I, I look at Arthur and I'm like, hmm, he didn't, he was able to get up. Honestly, I was just in a hurry because I wanted to see what would happen if we keep going and then he <laughs> didn't sleep. <laughs> All right. It was just cattle corn. <laughs> it's actually pretty good one. Actually, I was just curious was what would happen to a living person if they eat something from there. I was just waiting for something to happen to you. <laughs> it just wasn't. All right. And that's two for two on eating food in strange realms and having no negative side effects. You really should keep that up when we go and try to fetch that rose, darling. See how that turns out for you. I also want to see that. Fair point. Okay, so note to self, pack turkey legs. Yeah. Okie dokie. Let's go back home. We got your yeah. soul back. We have to ask your sister if we can kill her. No, we don't. 
Well, you ask her. Oh, yeah. I will not be doing that. <laughs> well, you just said you were going to. I'm going to talk to her. Yeah, but I'm not. Ask no, her. no discussion of murder will be had. It's not murder at any point if in you time. Ask her really. First. Okay. Well, then we we don't need to have a discussion. Then so fine. Uh, no big deal. It's probably better if she doesn't know beforehand. To be honest with you. This is a fun bit. This is a fun bit that we're doing right now. <laughs> Percy, darling, doing a if, bit. You want, if you want, until things get a little more apocalyptic, we can probably try to find other solutions. But, darling, if wow. it comes down to the wire, probably wild, try. What a what a what a convincing argument you're making here. <laughs> oh, darling, I don't commit to anything. Practically. Not in full force, but well, we... we're not killing her. It's not happening. I'm gonna go talk to her right now and uh... and ask her. No, but... no. <laughs> Percy, Percy, is your sister's life worth the life of every other living being on the material plane? It doesn't. It doesn't have to be a choice. If anything that you've taught me, Lark, there's no such thing as black and white. There's always a gray area. He's using my words against me. Mm. My little boy is growing up. <laughs> and Percy turns in a Still huff and a starts very walking away from you. <laughs> oh, great. Now he's leaving. Did you manage to make your way back through the streets of the lower city and up into the upper city once again? Um, and all the way back to Percy's parents' house. It seems to be getting late in the evening. A lot of houses have begun to turn on, um, I say turn on their lights as if they have light bulbs, uh, begin to light candles and fireplaces and things of that nature so that all of the windows are lit with the yellow warming glow that glitters and glistens on the wet street as you manage to make your way back. As you enter the house, you do see the lights are on. There is food cooking in the kitchen and uh, your mother rounds the corner along with Rosie, the rose bush, holding a bowl in vines with a whisk in one of its little branches. Oh. Oh, oh, thank goodness you're back. Um, Great, yeah, it was a pretty quick trip, all in all. Uh, How long were we gone from outside? Just curious. About maybe a day and a half. Hmm. Oh, okay. Uh, Feel like more of like a few hours for us. Lark got his soul back, so mission successful. Um, Well, that's definitely a good thing. Um, We actually uh, are... uh, Felt a little interesting tonight. We're having uh, pancakes for dinner, um, as evidenced by a (laughs) lovely helper. And of course, you hear Rosie at this point still whisking, going, I'm (laughs) helping! Yeah, you're very good at that. Yay! <laughs> As they continue stirring. Well, um, I love Rosie. <laughs> <laughs> they're so cute. It shouldn't be long until they're ready. Uh, we already have some made. We bought uh, fresh syrup this morning. So um, there's definitely uh, plenty. Uh, so you can regale us with your interesting stories about what happened <laughs> over dinner. Right. Um, uh, is Bella home right now? Oh, yeah. she's She's been home for quite some time. Um, she is uh, taking a, a, a little nap in her room. She did have uh, apparently quite a tough day at um, her... Uh, little magical academy lessons that she's been taking, but uh, she'll probably be down in time for dinner. All right. Um, I think, well, probably best to 
freshen up a little bit now. Um, we'll be down in, in a little bit. Of course. And both your mom and Rosie go back into the kitchen. Um, and the house is yours. Uh, I just turn like, I'm going to go talk to my sister. Not about murder. Not even a little bit. Um, so. Oh, yes. do, do ask her how apocalyptic it went today during school. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, I walk up to Bella's room. <laughs> and knock. Does anybody mind <laughs> if I take a bath? That sounds so good. <laughs> Should we go to the spa? <laughs> uh, okay, pancakes first, then spa. Agreed. If they're still open. So you go up to Bella's room at the end of the hallway, and she, as you are about to knock on her door, she just opens the door. Oh, hey, you're back. Hey, yeah. Um, I just kind of look down the stairs at like the boys starting to settle in. Can we talk real quick? Um, sure. I, I, I kind of push her into, into her oh, room. Um, okay. <laughs> uh, oh, oh, sure. Um, it, it's still an absolute disaster as yeah. usual. Fabric everywhere. Her mannequins are propped up in weird places. There's half finished hats and half finished. Um, all kinds of things just scattered across the room. There's about yeah. probably five or six square feet of floor space that's open. <laughs> and even her bed is covered in fabric stuff that somehow she still sleeps on. <laughs> um, and she just, um, what, what, what do you need to talk about? Um, first of all, uh, how's, how's school going and everything? Uh... Um, pretty good. Um, they really... Well, they really went um, a bit hard on the telekinetic abilities um, to try and push and pull things and throw things. And cool. they were trying to get heavier objects. I almost lifted a piano. I can't even do that without magic. Um, but uh, has anything weird happened? Like, I mean, weird, weirder. Uh, no, not that I can think of. Are the cat's still around? Oh yeah, the cats are always around. Cool. Um, all right, listen. Um, we got, uh, uh, we met a fortune teller down in the shadow fell. Um, and at first I was just trying to like leave because it was very uncomfortable. Um, but uh, she gave us a fortune uh, and I'm, I'll explain like the prophecy of Thurzud and the chains and everything. So I don't have to rehash all of that actually mm -hmm. uh, right now. Um, and I'll say, and I think that fortune was that you are playing the part of the watcher of Thurzud. That the, that the other, the liches give you these artifacts, the, the, the crown, the, the, the staff and the cloak, and then you summon there is a doom uh, uh, I'm, I'm sorry why would i summon this thing i don't i don't know i don't know it that's just what the prophecy said and i mean i know you wouldn't clearly like you're not an insane person and i just <sighs> I don't know what to do with that. I, I really don't either. But I mean, I wanted to like tell you at least because it's about you. And I guess you're just a lot more involved in this than we thought at first. Apparently. Well, I guess that would explain the cats then. Yeah. So, I mean, I guess just for now, like, I mean, I don't know, I already asked you to tell me if anything weird happens, but now, like, really, if anything weird happens, <laughs> please let me know. Yeah. Um, yeah. 
I'll, I'll, I'll be sure to tell you. Can I insight check to see if she's hiding that she has something weird? Yes, has, you, has may. Happened? <laughs> you may. You <laughs> may. All right, I rolled very high, and I, I rolled a seventeen plus. Ooh. Plus insight is a plus four, so that's twenty-one. She's being completely truthful. Okay. Right. Uh, just. Percy kind of shoes. pauses for a second to like really like, should I tell her that they, my, my friends want to kill her should I tell her that <laughs> like, um, yeah I think Percy has started learning that maybe hiding things <laughs> and I was I really wasn't trying to hide the the artifacts I wasn't um but <laughs> um Percy Okay, maybe uh, just trying to freak out of this part. Um, and maybe you already kind of predicted it. The boys have already suggested killing you. Oh. Of course, I told them no fucking way. But uh, they are being a little bit adamant about it. Well, that's not good. No, no. And I'm not going to let that happen ever. Uh, it's, it's not, it's not happening, but I don't want to hide things from you. And uh, yeah. Well, I uh, guess I have to. It might make dinner a little awkward. Yeah, it would. Well, speaking of, we should probably get to eating dinner i'm hungry yeah. um I, I don't know about you yeah uh i've only eaten chocolate for the past like 12 hours oh um. <laughs> yeah not good. again should have had some petal corn <laughs> um like yeah and i'll uh walk with her okay. downstairs Yep, and you rejoin as your mother and father and to some degree Rosie are helping put plates of pancakes on the table as well as plenty of syrup. Um, and I'm assuming you guys sit down for a nice family dinner, which we can move past unless anybody <laughs> needs any role-playing opportunities. We can just say that think, you all yeah. had a... Nice. It's a little, little tense, <laughs> a, little, a little uncomfy, but uh, my parents were like, so how did it go? And I'm like, oh, yeah. <laughs> it went. <laughs> it went to the most fascinating carnival that your son just didn't seem to enjoy himself out at all. Oh. Yeah, I, mean, I had more fun than Rarick, but I mean, no, I did not really have a great time at the hell carnival. Um I didn't think they'd have carnivals in the Shadowfell. Honestly, it gave me mm. a few ideas. Why should the Nine Hells be the only people <laughs> with carnivals in the Shadowfell? Lark hasn't given anybody here I seeds, mean... has he? None of you took a seed from Lark? No. Do not give my family your evil seeds. Oh. Oh, Percy. <laughs> Uh, all right, can we not talk about Lark's <laughs> seed at the table? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, let, let's not talk about that at the table. We are eating dinner. Yeah, that, that, was, that was the yeah. innuendo I was going for, definitely. Um, Father, oh. pass, pass the syrup, please. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, did we lose Yofi again? I froze. Oh. Uh oh. Fingers crossed. Yep. We oh, can hear you. Is. <laughs> Hello. I can hear. Okay. Uh, yeah, I can hear. There you go. There we go. Yeah. Now, All person, right. honestly, you can't keep going around saying that to people. I will. I can. I will continue to do so. 
And what does it say about you if you go around with someone saying, oh, don't take the fairies' evil seeds? You look like a madman, darling. I already walk around with you next to me. I look like a madman already. <gasps> Ooh. Wow. Yeah, okay. we might need to find a way to rephrase that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'd be good. Or you could just stop handing out seeds. You could do that too. And why would I do that? So the people don't get kidnapped and taken to the fairy realm and turned Wait, into what? evil servants. That'd be good. Wait, what's happening? <laughs> uh, yeah, don't, don't take the seeds. Don't take them, please. All right, then. Somebody pass a syrup. <laughs> very tense dinner <laughs> yeah and i'm assuming dinner kind of somewhat shifts back to normal if yeah. a bit tense and a little more like this is a lot more fun than that, than that oh. carnival father the curtains new <laughs> uh no they're the same old curtains oh. we've had for years uh, never mind then <laughs> And so dinner well, continues. Mom and dad don't care. Oh, and no. <laughs> ends awkwardly as everybody shifts to their evening activity. <laughs> and I think at this point, it might be a good time to end the episode there. So all of you, if you could come back next week to see just what kind of family drama we're going to get into now. <laughs> And I will see the rest of you in about five minutes. <laughs>